Good afternoon, everybody. First thing I'd like you to do for about a minute is go ahead and close your eyes. Close your eyes. And what I'd like you to do is just kind of picture being outdoors, sitting next to a campfire, smelling the smell of the campfire, maybe the crackling sound. You might see the sun setting over the lake off in the distance. You might be even roasting a marshmallow. Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go back into it. What I'd like to do today, let me, by a show of hands, I'd like to know who has ever thought about owning an RV, recreational vehicle, or who currently owns an RV? Anyone out there? Fantastic. That's awesome. What I'd like to do today is kind of explain the five things that you need to consider that are most important when you purchase an, an RV. First thing you need to think about is what do you and your family enjoy doing? What, what's important to you? Um, you know, where do, where do you like going? What activities do you like doing? So that's kind of the first thing you need to think about is do you want to be that weekend warrior where you go out on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and, you know, just kind of enjoy from week to week? Or are you going to be the person that goes out for two, three, four week vacations? Or are you going to be the person that maybe lives in that RV full time? It's going more popular nowadays. Um, are you into sports? Are you into kayaking, hunting, fishing, motorsports? You like dirt bike riding, things like that. So those are that's the first thing you kind of need to get in your mind and what you need to consider. The second thing you need to think about is what sort of features are you guys looking for? If you've got kids, you need bunk beds, maybe. If you're going to be in it full time, you're going to need uh, storage. You might need washer and dryer, internet connections, uh, you know, uh, uh, satellite connections, all those things. Um, or if you're going to be into sports and you've got dirt bikes you bring along or ATVs, you might need something with a garage, put them in, a fueling station to refill them, things like that. Maybe even if you're out in the wilderness, you need a, 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 a generator so you can go boondocking. So those are the first two things you need to think about. The third, you need to think about what types of RVs are out there. What am I looking at? Am I... And yep, to operate this. Are you going to be the type that wants to travel with your family as you cruise down from point A to point B? You want mom or dad to be driving, the other to be making lunch for the kids, or, or you want to sneak in a nap between point A and point B, or do you want to watch TV or play board games or what have you? This is the bad boy you'd be looking at. They're known as diesel bushers as, as well. Uh, this is a class A motorhome. There's two types of RVs. There's the motorhome, and then the ones you pull behind with a, a truck or a, a vehicle. So that's the big boy. The Class B is similar. It's still a motorhome, but it's a little bit smaller. So if you you don't want to drive this big one down the road, then you know you might get these are used a lot for tailgating and things like that. Uh, class C is the the third type of motorhome. Uh, you can sleep over the, the bed of the cab. I like to remember the class C in those orders as cab over, C for cab, so it's kind of a little, a little trick. Then we have kind of the standard, typical bumper pull. This is what you need. Uh, you're, you'd need a, a half ton pickup truck at least to pull these, maybe a three quarter ton, depending on how much they weigh. But this is, these do have slide outs as well. You can get a little extra space maybe on the other side of slide out. The next one here is the big boy. That's, that's something you're going to need a, a one ton dually or a three quarter ton. That, and you can see the slide out on the side there. Just That's like the living room or kitchen that slides out to give you more room. Uh, because we are camping, remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then the toy hauler, as I mentioned, if you've got a bunch of toys to bring with you, you've got some ATVs or golf carts or whatever, down in the bottom left by his boots is a fuel station. That's where you refill. You fill up with gas and you refill your toys there. These do have generators that you can go out boondocking, like I said, and then you can, you know, basically be self-sufficient. <clears throat> Lastly, you've got the pop-up camper, which, you know, keep in mind does the same thing. You're out camping 
Uh, not as big as and nice. Uh, it does have an AC unit on top here, but this one you don't need the big $70,000 dually truck to pull it with, right? You can pull this with, you know, they're about three, 4,000 pounds. You can pull it with a little SUV. So a lot more people have that as the regular day driver. So that's, that's the pop-up. And secondly, or I'm sorry, the, the fourth thing you need to look, remember is what sort of a budget thing, something to consider is, am I looking at a certain price point, a hundred bucks a month, 300 bucks a month? Am I trying to keep it down to $40,000 or what have you? So you can finance these, if they're $40,000 or more, you can finance them for 20 years, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, Probably not recommended unless, you know, I don't know, and get a good interest rate, but you can actually get into a brand new <laughs> RV for under a hundred bucks. You know, there's, yeah. So those are things to consider. The average term is 144 months, which is 12 years. So, you know, you can buy something for 20 grand and only spend 150 bucks a month on it. So, um, so that's the fourth thing you need to really think about. The fifth thing is, how do you maintain and uh, you know uh, uh, work on them? You know the maintenance required. Um, the so there are warranties that come with these. Manufacturer warranties are typically three to four years, roughly. You can find a dealership that has a lifetime warranty. Um, <clears throat> so. But you do need to maintain it just like your own house, right? I mean, you've got a water heater in some of these. You've got AC units. Uh, you can bring it in, spend the extra to have them do all the maintenance. But inevitably, being an owner myself, there are going to be things that go wrong that you need to learn how to fix yourself. So those are the five important things, as mentioned. The activities, interests, features, models, the budget, and clearly the maintenance. And, and what size do you want to drive the operation of that vehicle? So, all right, by a show of hands, who's ready to buy an RV and start enjoying Mother Nature? <laughs> That's it. Thank you. <laughs>